So how do we see the different types of intelligence in a chart? We know that, okay, so intelligence, let's define that, the ability to get information, right? The ability to learn, the ability to understand something clearly. We know that there are different types of intelligence. You know, there is a logical intelligence and there is like a more emotional intelligence. Um, how do we see and discern this in the charts? So we go, first off, you want to start with the grahas, the planets, because for those of you who, you know, you, you probably already heard this if you stay with me, but the planets are the conscious forces in the chart. They are the people, the conscious beings. Anything with consciousness is going to be related to the planets. Anything with um, a quality and environment, a physical feature, an objective thing is going to deal more with the signs and even um, the nakshatras to a degree. Um, so that's the import one important thing to, to, to notice and to always be kind of discerning. So the planets are really the main sources of the consciousness, the intelligence that we're going to have. So there are uh, five elements and the five elemental planets. These are a big say on the type of intelligence that we will have. The sun and the moon are not considered part of the five elements. They are just luminaries. Together there are seven, but the sun and the moon are more seen as aspects of our own self. The sun is like your soul nature, the moon is like your mind nature. And then the other five planets, they are going to be more the skills, the intelligence we might use or develop, the people we might interact with, the tools. And so uh, basically, that's kind of, uh, that's basically it. So, all right, so if you have, and, and here's one way to read this. Uh, if you have one of these planets in your first house or in your fifth house, or it is your Atmakarika or with your Atmakarika in the Navamsha or in the Rashi chart, then you have one of these types of intelligences that we're going to describe. So, All right. So starting with uh, the sun, the sun gives the intelligence of a singer and the knowledge of the Vedas. That's the specific thing Jaimini describes for the intelligence of the sun. And that's because the sun gives the intelligence of inspiration, just pure inspiration. When your higher self is just telling you direct intuition without using the senses. And that's what, when you just have to sing your joy, you know, uh, that's the sun it gives that inspired intelligence that you just have to sing, you know, you just have to sing the truth and it can make one a singer. Um, as well, if you have the sun as your Atmakarika or with your Atmakarika in the Navamsha. Now, um, the other interesting thing is, well, no, that's it on the sun. And then um, the moon actually gives you a social, emotional intelligence. It gives one knowledge of Sankhya Yoga, which is the process of manifestation of things. So I actually interpret that as the moon gives you a really good knowledge of the past and where things have come from and your roots. And it also gives one, um, it can, in a modern day context, this can get people really into anthropology or, you know, arts that study sciences of the past and sciences that deal with people. And then that's again, because the moon gives knowledge of Sankhya Yoga and social sciences and makes one a musician, Gayaka. So sun is a singer, moon is a musician. So the moon, the music, the intelligence of a musician is to be in the flow of life, is to be able to adapt, to go with the flow. Oh, it's his time to do the solo. I need to step back. Now it's time, my time to step in. So the moon has really good emotional intelligence and really good social intelligence and can really make people feel good and have good rapport with people. And then Mars is... Uh, a Nayaika, which is basically, uh, you know, Jaimini describes him as one of the philosophy, basically a philosophy of logic. Um, basically, uh, the Nayaika philosophy is a is a one of the six Shah Darshans, one of the six philosophies of Hinduism. It's basically about um, logically looking at everything in life, and so Mars is the the intelligence of logic, really an underrated intelligence, if you ask me. 
So if you have Mars in your first or in your fifth or with your Atmakaraka or as your Atmakaraka, you're probably a logical person, wouldn't you agree? And you need to know that and keep going with those strengths. If your Mars is afflicted, you might need to be more logical at times. So this is just a great way we can use simple technique to see the type of intelligence someone will have. And um, so now we'll go to Mercury, a Mimamsaka. So Mimamsa is one of the other philosophies of Hinduism that's based on investigation and inquiry. So Mercury gives the intelligence of investigation, of research, of self-inquiry, even when it comes to spirituality, but just inquiring, um, examining, looking at the details. Let's break out the rule book and really study it here and see that's Mercury, why he rules lawyers, you know, or researchers. So he rules finding truth in the fine print, you know. Um, you need a good Mercury intelligence to do astrology, to really zoom in and get detailed with your research and study. So if you have Mercury in the first, fifth, or with Atmakaraka, or as Atmakaraka, then yeah, probably have that as one of your intelligences. And then what's really neat is that uh, um, we give uh, Saturn gets, Jaimini has gives him the intelligence of being socially senseless or frigid. So uh, Saturn has the opposite of that social energy of the moon Saturn's like oblivious to society and is socially senseless or stupid in a sense like when people are whatever see the, see the funny thing here is that what, what Jaime is hinting at is that he gives the intelligence of simplicity not needing to know all these worldly see in the world people put on airs you know what I mean they make all this stuff extra complicated than it needs to be and Saturn sees through all that and is simplicity. That's his intelligence. And it's so beautiful because if you can't explain something simply, you probably don't know what you're talking about. And that Saturn calls you out on that. You know what I mean? And so you'll notice this with Instagram or social media. You'll, I don't know. There's this guy I recently just had to unfollow because I'm like, man, this sciencey guy on his Instagram always saying, this study says you can, you know, work work like this and don't work like that and, and he's just all about what to do and what to not do and to like make things just a little better i'm just like man this guy's gonna give himself a heart attack like or an aneurysm like just chill and just live your life you know and that's something that that is that saturnian intelligence that is kind of underrated and especially with these uh social influencers who are addicted to dopamine you know what i mean um and don't recognize the value of just fasting or simplicity or saturn you know what i mean um just taking a break stepping back um okay now moving on to venus venus he says some really profound and great things about venus he says venus is a poet eloquent and wise as a sage slash knowing prophecy so venus is about venus gives that intelligence of the poetic intelligence the the ability to see symbolism to see meaning where there is none as my teacher ernst says you know um wise as a sage and knowing prophecy so actually the intelligence of being really good at predictions and knowing prophecy is venus is venus is a venusian intelligence like i have venus with my amakarika in the swamsha in the navamsha so that's probably why i like doing a lot of what i'm doing right now <laughs> if you if you get that um <clears throat> and then jupiter has the is the uh is just said to be all knowing and one who understands and then he goes further to say na vagmi which means vagmi means like talking a lot talkative speaking well so not speaking well not talking a lot jupiter is the opposite of like mercury or venus or the rajasic planets he doesn't want to talk that much he I'm here because I have Mercury with my Amakarka in the Rashi and Venus with my Amakarka in the Navamsha, or I wouldn't be on YouTube babbling all day. I'd just be enjoying the bliss of Jupiter, right? Um, <clears throat> so Jupiter is all-knowing and one who understands, but is not speaking well, not speaking much, not talkative, and not wordy. Not wordy, not eloquent in their speech even, which is really just a fascinating thing that I've actually found to be very true. And... He also goes once, it gives one more sutra on it. So it gives three sutras on Jupiter and no other planet. And the whole point of the Jaimini sutras is that they're written down really short, condensed version. It's possible there was a paper shortage at the time that this was written because it's extremely condensed down. Um, 
And yeah, it says particularly a grammarian and knowing the Vedas and Vedangas. So Jupiter is specifically a grammarian and a knower of the Vedas and Vedangas. Very, very interesting. So there. why is uh, so one really neat thing about Jupiter and the grammarian? The summer I learned that Jupiter being a grammarian, I was like, that's fascinating because my uh, my my mother has Jupiter as her on my car and always taught me really good grammar and how to proofread things. And in every book I read growing up, we always had a pen or pencil to point out typos and correct them. And when I was taught that, I was telling Ryan that. And I was like, that's fascinating because I have that and I'm really, and I just, my one of my teachers at the time, Ryan Kurzak, who many of you know, <clears throat> he had just put out his book and I proofread it. And I found 11 typos in the first eight pages. And he was like, oh, you're being really critical. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, you're, you're, you rushed through this book and you know it. And I was like, here, all these things, fix them. And I was so... He told me I was voraciously critical. <laughs> I was like, look, man, that's what you hired me to do. I'm a grammarian. I take this very seriously. And I'm the opposite of that where I, I don't rush through anything. You know what I mean? When it comes to writing and a really, really, like I've been working on this one book since 2018 and I've had the idea since 2013 and I had to research it for five years and I just really take my time with things. But that's, Again, because Jupiter is my Amakarika. So funny thing is I was telling Ryan this, I was like, wow, it's so fascinating, blah, blah, blah. We're playing Scrabble. We're literally playing Scrabble with his wife. Um, and uh, this was in like 2013. And I'm like, yeah, like, look, I'll just break out the instructions for the Scrabble and find a typo. And I just grabbed the instructions for Scrabble. And sure enough, I found a typo in the Scrabble instructions. Scrabble, the entire book is about spelling words correctly it's all about literally how you spell a word and put it correctly and there was a typo in that in their own book and i found it and i just laughed at ryan because i was like this is just how fitting you know what i mean um so if you have that type of intelligence Ju jupiter wants to basically um do things another at another point in the sutras jaimini conveys that jupiter likes to do things from a uh like an established tradition or from an authoritative source and likes to build upon that knowledge. And I highly suggest we're all doing that because I mean, otherwise, you, how many, how often do you see people just trying to reinvent the wheel and they just don't even know that there's already an astrologer out there who's figured out the birth chart of Bitcoin or something. And there's someone still just trying to rectify it or figure it out. It's like, no, well, maybe if you Googled or searched or reached out a little bit more, you would have found that this work's already been done and it could have saved you a lot of trouble. So, Jupiter likes to work from like guru, you know, like have a guru, have an established tradition of knowledge that it just makes things a lot easier. Okay, so that's the intelligence of the planets and look for them in the first house, fifth house, or with the Atmakarika or as the Atmakarika, particularly if it's with it in the Rashi chart or Navamsha chart. And then look at the even from the Navamsha chart Ah, that's going to get too much. There's more ways you can see it, but this, for now, this is enough. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Oh, and by the way, yeah, so if you enjoyed that little bit and you'd like to know more, check out my online school, I the Veda, Teachable. I'll leave a link below there. And um, that video is a part of the Rashi's course that I'm teaching. So check